Hi. I knew that by the time you're watching this, this has gone by already, but I wanted to post this later so then you couldn't get any ideas from me because I'm selfish. So ZHC created a drawing competition. This is the second one. My first one looked like this. It didn't even get showed in the video, so that um kind of demolished me mentally. Even in the mini credits in the video, it was like, nah, nothing there. But that doesn't matter. I'm here to try again with the theme of dragon fruit animal. So I came up with the idea to make a dragon fruit turtle. This is a very, very rough sketch of it. I took out my lovely paper and for this artwork, I will be using some watercolors, pencils and line art. So this is the reference for the sketch. I'm just gonna sketch it out real quick. This is my second time ever drawing a turtle. Turtles come to me naturally and I love it. I added on the second arm-ish thing. <laughs> this is me admiring the work of art that I had just created. I just finished it off and then here we go. This is the finished piece. It has come for the watercolour time. I love using watercolours. I mixed up my own little pinkish red for the outside part of the turtle. I don't know what to call it, okay? Don't judge me. As I was cleaning out the brush, as you usually do like this, I squirted some on the desk. Yeah, yeah, I could not see that at all, you know? I mixed a lovely, very, very light grey to get the white part of the dragon fruit, aka the rest of the turtle. I really didn't want it to be too dark, so I just kept it real light. Then when I put it on the tail, guess what happens? It starts leaking! Luckily, this horrific disaster has a very simple solution of just using a tissue, and then reapplying it in the same space so it still leaks a little bit. Well, that doesn't matter, I can always fix it up. It's not like I'm entering it into a really worldwide known competition that can make me real famous, you know? Nah. So I looked up how dragon fruits grow and they grow out of this really weird cactus thing. I didn't even know that. So I decided let's draw it like that. That will be like seaweed in some water and the turtle will be like swimming away from it since it's nice and ripe and an adult leaving home. You can call me dramatic all you want but I will stay with this storyline and thank you so much for supporting me. <laughs> After a whole lot of shading and watercolour adding, it ended up looking like this. I mixed up a slightly darker grey for the more shading of the turtle body so I can add it here like this. I'm finally filling in the monstrosity of the tail that is leaking green now as well, so yeah. Thank god for grey that, you know, gets rid of all colour. Which it doesn't. I shade all kinds of levels of shading on the body and now I move on to the outer part. The shell, I think it's called. I'm not sure. Okay, so I add the little lines that they have. Not too well, so don't judge me. The shading was boring, so I'm just going to skip that for now. <laughs> now this is where it gets interesting. I start adding some blue around it just to make it oceany. I leave out a rim because the watercolours are still kind of drying and I don't want more leakage to happen, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm starting off with a really light blue. Now that the blue was absolutely everywhere with bubbles all over it, <laughs> which we love, I went in with a much darker one and carefully started filling in the areas right next to the turtle. Probably a little risky, but who cares. Now when I add the blue around the head, it looks like it's got a blue halo or a very long fuzzy beard. I continue going and I'm like, damn, this kind of looks like crap. So I need to change it up a little bit and that's where this comes in. I take a blob of the darkest blue I own and put it in the corner. Yes, I put it in the corner. I was so nervous making this decision, but I'm actually really glad I did because it just gives it so much more dimension. So for now, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to put it in the corner where the cactus is because like, I don't want to make it blue because the water isn't like on the cactus. Well, I mean, it is. It is. It's like it's in the water, so it's surrounded by water. So I just keep adding on and blending into the other shades of blue. And then I'm like, nah, just going to put it around it, you know? Because leaving out the cactus, being horrible to the cactus. The duck I made each corner 
the more I was like, hell, I need to make this dark, so I did. I put on some very dark grey, and the, I was so glad I made this decision, because it made it more, like, realistic. And that's what I'm going for, you know? Because we love realism. I dabbed off some of the paint that was getting too dark in the middle, and then I filled in the lovely eye, nice and black. How we love it. I feel like black eyes are just adorable. It was time to take out my lovely watercolour pencils. I just started adding in the details on the cactus and on the turtle's shell. I made the spikes on the shell a little bit too dark, but who cares? They needed to pop, which they don't because it's too dark, but who cares? Uh, the spikes, if you don't know, the dragon fruit has these kind of spikes. They're kind of the colour of the cactus, which I should have used, but I didn't. And then when I tried to fix it, it just wasn't working because of the red-ish pink and the dark pencils already on it. I started outlining the cactus and with just lighter colour and then I started shading it. Uh, it was actually really hard to do this because it's kind of hard to do the perspective of this cactus. <laughs> so here you can see the effect that the water has on the watercolour pencils. It kind of melts them down and turns them into watercolours. While of shading the cactus I finally got to the pencil part on the actual turtle. I started off with the red and just started putting in the details and stuff, just trying to make it nice and popping, <laughs> if that makes sense. Put down the pencil coat and it's time for the water. I don't know why it's so satisfying, it just melts and turns into watercolours and it just melts and blends and it's beautiful. After blending all of that, I finally go in with some black for the seeds. Seeds took so long because they needed to be in the perfect shape and in the perfect position for it to not look like I've planned it ahead but also for it not to be completely random. So I also used the seeds to kind of shade the face and get like the details of the face, the structure and then just added it everywhere even on the horrible tail. Then grabbed my white pencil and did a very crappy outline of some bubbles that you cannot see at all. Is why I took this lovely blue and outlined them again so then they could be a little bit more visible but then they weren't visible enough so I then took a darker blue and outlined it again and now I added water into it so it kind of blends and looks like bubbles, hopefully. I am celebrating because it does look like bubbles and now it is time for my favourite part, the line art. I outlined the face and then continued on to the rest. You can't see anything because of my hand but let's just ignore that for now. You'll see the face in a minute. <laughs> if you noticed, I will very gladly explain what the hell happened to my nail. Don't worry, it's not a bruise, it's not anything horrible and squeamish because I hate nail stuff, so don't worry about that. It's just simply I was spray painting and used my finger instead of something to weigh down the paper. So yeah, had this for a whole week. Now this is where I decided to do the very bad mistake I made, but it turned out looking good but it was just horrible for me because I needed to do every single one of these little shapes these little wrinkles on the turtle's skin, which was just so much fun. I added a whole bunch of new spikes on the turtle's shell. I think it was a good idea, but also really wasn't because they're not green. But you'll see what I do with that in a minute, so stay tight and wait. Yes, yes, this is where we head on to the horrible tail. I'm so excited, you know, because we just love this tail that's just green and pink and white at the same time. It was actually really easy to make and I didn't really care about the leakage, so who cares, let's just ignore that, everyone will ignore that, please, the agency ignore that, please. I started outlining the cactus and that's when I realised, oh man, that thing holding onto the turtle, mm-hmm, that's sus. If you're not a dirty minded teenager then it should be okay I guess. And here comes the solution to the non-green spikes. Posca pens. I, I used to really love Posca pens, but then I realized you can't do any details with them. And I love details, so I kind of stopped using them. But this this is what they're good for. You can put them on anything, and they will stick, and they will color over anything. You see that little lift? You see that? That means we're ready, and it's satisfying. I'm going to get this to normal speed for you guys so you can enjoy the peel. Please ignore the background noise in the following clips. So this is the dragon fruit turtle. I hope you like it. I hope CHC will like it. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.